Good morning everyone, my name is Miguel Fuentes and today is Saturday, so Shabbat Shalom to those who are, for those who are in Christ, amen. And so today we're going to get into 2 Samuel chapter 17 through 20, and it's going to be a pretty interesting time in David's life, so before we get started, let's go ahead and pray first, amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you, Lord, for the time together as the body of Christ. Lord, we worship you. We glorify your holy name, God, Lord. And, uh, Father, we pray that let your word not return void, Father. And, Lord, help us, Lord, to believe in your word and in your will, Father. And help us, Lord, to be doers of the word and not hearers only. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your blood, your precious blood, Lord. Cleanse us of all unrighteousness, God. Lord, we repent from every sin that we have committed. Father, we come boldly upon your throne, Lord, that, Lord, judge our hearts, Father, so that we may change our ways, Father, for your glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Ready for the word? Chapter 17. Here we go. Second Samuel 17. Moreover, Hithophel said unto Absalom, Let me now choose out twelve thousand men, and I will arise and pursue after David this night. And I will come upon him while he is weary and weak-handed, and will make him afraid. And all the people that are with him shall flee, and I will smite the king only. And I will bring back all the people unto thee. The man whom thou seekest is as if all returned. So all the people shall be in peace. And the saying pleased Absalom well, and all the elders of Israel. Then said Absalom, Call now Hushai the archite also, and let us hear likewise what he saith. And when Hushai was come to Absalom, Absalom spake unto him, saying, Ahithophel hath spoken after this manner. Shall we do after his saying? If not, speak thou. And Hushai said unto Absalom, the counsel that Ahithophel hath given is not good at this time. Or said Hushai, Thou knowest thy father and his men, that they be mighty men, and they be chafed in their minds, as a bear robbed of her whelps in the field. And thy father is a man of war, and will not lodge with the people. Behold, he is hid now in some pit or in some other place, and it will come to pass when some of them be overthrown at the first that whosoever heareth it will say, There is a slaughter among the people that follow Absalom. And he also that is valiant, whose heart is as the heart of a lion, shall utterly melt. For all Israel knoweth that thy father is a mighty man, and they which be with him are valiant men. Therefore I counsel that all Israel be generally gathered unto thee, from Dan even to Beersheba, as the sand that is by the sea for multitude, and that thou go to battle in thine own person. So shall we come upon him in some place where he shall be found, and we will light upon him as the dew falleth on the ground, and of him, and of all the men that are with him, there shall not be left so much as one. Mm. Moreover, if he be gotten into a city, then shall all Israel bring ropes to that city, and we will draw it into the river until there be not one small stone found there. And Absalom and all the men of Israel said, The counsel of Hushai the archite is better than the counsel of Ahithophel. For the Lord had appointed to defeat the good counsel of Ahithophel to the intent that the Lord might bring evil upon Absalom. Then said Hushai unto Zadok and to Abiathar the priests, Thus and thus did Ahithophel counsel Absalom and the elders of Israel, and thus and thus have I counseled. Now therefore send quickly and tell David, saying, Lodge not this night in the plains of the wilderness, but speedily pass over, lest the king be swallowed up and all the people that are with him. Now Jonathan and Ahimah stayed by Enrogel, for they might not be seen to come into the city. And a wench went and told them, and they went and told King David. Nevertheless, a lad saw them and told Absalom, but they went both of them away quickly and came to a man's house in Bahurim, which had a well in his court, whither they went down. 
And the woman took and spread a covering over the well's mouth, and spread a brown corn thereon. And the thing was not known. And when Absalom's servants came to the woman to the house, they said, Where is Ahimaaz and Jonathan? And the woman said unto them, They be gone over the brook of water. And when they had sought and could not find them, they returned to Jerusalem. And it came to pass after they were departed that they came up out of the well and went and told to King David and said unto David, Arise and pass quickly over the water. For thus hath Ahithophel counseled against you. Then David arose and all the people that were with him and they passed over Jordan. By the morning light there lacked not one of them that was not gone over Jordan. And when Ahithophel saw that his counsel was not followed, he saddled his ass and arose and got him home to his house, to his city, and put his household in order, and hanged himself, and died, and was buried in the sepulchre of his father. Wow. Then David came to Mahanaim, and Absalom passed over Jordan, he and all the men of Israel with him. And Absalom made Amasa captain of the host instead of Joab, which Amasa was a man's son, whose name was Ithra, an Israelite that went into Abigail, the daughter of Nahash, sister to Zeruiah, Joab's mother. So Israel and Absalom pitched in the land of Gilead. And it came to pass, when David was come to Mahanaim, that Shobai, the son of Nahash of Rabbah, of the children of Ammon, and Machir, the son of Amiel, of Lodabar, and Barzillai, the Gileadite, of Rogalim, brought beds and basins and earthen vessels and wheat and barley and flour and parched corn and beans and lentils and parched pulse and honey and butter and sheep and cheese of kind for David and for the people that were with him to eat. But they said, the people is hungry and weary and thirsty in the wilderness. Chapter 18. Second Samuel 18. And David numbered the people that were with him, and set captains of thousands and captains of hundreds over them. And David sent forth a third part of the people under the hand of Joab, and a third part under the hand of Abishai the son of Zeruiah, Joab's brother, and a third part under the hand of Ittai the Gittite. And the king said unto the people, I will surely go forth with you myself also. But the people answered, Thou shalt not go for. Oh. But if we flee away, they will not care for us. Neither, if half of us die, will they care for us. But now thou art worth ten thousand of us. Therefore now it is better that thou succor us out of the city. And the king said unto them, What seemeth you best, I will do. And the king stood by the gate side, and all the people came out by hundreds and by thousands. And the king commanded Joab and Abishai and Ittai, saying, Deal gently for my sake with the young man, even with Absalom. And all the people heard when the king gave all the captains charge concerning Absalom. So the people went out into the field against Israel, and the battle was in the wood of Ephraim, where the people of Israel were slain before the servants of David, and there was there a great slaughter that day of twenty thousand men. For the battle was there scattered over the face of all the country, and the wood devoured more people that day than the sword had devoured. And Absalom met the servants of David, and Absalom rode upon a mule, and the mule went under the thick boughs of a great oak, and his head caught hold of the oak, and he was taken up between the heaven and the earth, and the mule that was under him went away. And a certain man saw it and told Joab and said, Behold, I saw Absalom hanged in an oak. And Joab said unto the man that told him, And behold, thou sawest him, and why didst thou not smite him there to the ground? And I would have given thee ten shekels of silver and a girdle. And the man said unto Joab, Though I should receive a thousand shekels of silver in mine hand, yet would I not put forth mine hand against the king's son, 
For in our hearing, the king charged thee and Abishai and Ittai, saying, Beware that none touch the young man Absalom. Otherwise, I should have wrought falsehood against mine own life. For there is no matter hid from the king, and thou thyself wouldest have set thyself against me. Then said Joab, I may not tarry thus with thee. And he took three darts in his hand, and thrust them through the heart of Absalom, while he was yet alive, in the midst of the oak. And ten young men that bare Joab's armor, compassed about, and smote Absalom, and slew him. And Joab blew the trumpet, and the people returned from pursuing after Israel. But Joab held back the people, and they took Absalom, and cast him into a great pit in the wood, and laid a very great heap of stones upon him. And all Israel fled, every one to his tent. Now Absalom, in his lifetime, had taken and reared up for himself a pillar which is in the king's dale. For he said, I have no son to keep my name in remembrance. And he called the pillar after his own name. And it is called unto this day Absalom's place. Then said Ahimaaz, the son of Zadok, Let me now run, and bear the king tidings, how that the Lord hath avenged him of his enemies. And Joab said unto him, Thou shalt not bear tidings this day, but thou shalt bear tidings another day. But this day thou shalt bear no tidings, because the king's son is dead. Then said Joab to Cushai, Go tell the king what thou hast seen. And Cushai bowed himself unto Joab, and ran. Then said Ahimaaz, the son of Zadok, yet again to Joab, But howsoever let me, I pray thee, also run after Cushai. And Joab said, Wherefore wilt thou run, my son, seeing that thou hast no tidings ready? But howsoever said he, Let me run. And he said unto him, Run. Then Ahimaaz ran by the way of the plain, and overran Cushai. And David sat between the two gates, and the watchman went up to the roof over the gate unto the wall, and lifted up his eyes, and looked, and behold, a man running alone. And the watchman cried, and told the king, and the king said, If he be alone, there is tidings in his mouth. And he came apace, and drew near. And the watchman saw another man running, and the watchman called unto the porter, and said, Behold, another man running alone. And the king said, He also bringeth tidings. And the watchman said, Methinketh the running of the foremost is like the running of Ahimaaz, the son of Zadok. And the king said, He is a good man, and cometh with good tidings. And Ahimaaz called, and said unto the king, All is well. And he fell down to the earth upon his face before the king, and said, Blessed be the Lord thy God, which hath delivered... Up the men that lifted up their hand against my lord the king. And the king said, Is the young man Absalom safe? And Ahimaaz answered, When Joab sent the king's servant, and me thy servant, I saw a great tumult, but I knew not what it was. And the king said unto him, Turn aside, and stand here. And he turned aside, and stood still. And behold, Cushai came, and Cushai said, Tidings, my lord the king. For the Lord hath avenged thee this day of all them that rose up against thee. And the king said unto Cushai, Is the young man Absalom safe? And Cushai answered, The enemies of my lord the king, and all that rise against thee to do thee hurt, be as that young man is. And the king was much moved, and went up to the chamber over the gate, and wept. And as he went, thus he said, O oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, would God I had died for thee, O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. Chapter 19. Chapter 19. 2 Samuel 19. And it was told Joab, Behold, the king weepeth and mourneth for Absalom. And the victory that day was turned into mourning unto all the people, for the people heard say that day how the king was grieved for his son. 
And the people got them by stealth that day into the city, as people being ashamed to steal away when they flee in battle. But the king covered his face, and the king cried with a loud voice, O oh, my son Absalom, O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. And Joab came into the house to the king and said, Thou hast shamed this day the faces of all thy servants, which this day have saved thy life and the lives of thy sons and of thy daughters, and the lives of thy wives and the lives of thy concubines, in that thou lovest thine enemies and hatest thy friends. For thou hast declared this day that thou regardest neither princes nor servants. For this day I perceive that if Absalom had lived, and all we had died this day, then it had pleased thee well. Now therefore arise, go forth, and speak comfortably unto thy servants. For I swear by the Lord, if thou go not forth, there will not tarry one with thee this night. And that will be worse unto thee than all the evil that befell thee from thy youth until now. Then the king arose and sat in the gate. And they told unto all the people, saying, Behold, the king doth sit in the gate. And all the people came before the king, for Israel had fled every man to his tent. And all the people were at strife throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, The king saved us out of the hand of our enemies, and he delivered us out of the hand of the Philistines, and now he has fled out of the land for Absalom. And Absalom, whom we anointed over us, is dead in battle. Now therefore, why speak ye not a word of bringing the king back? And King David sent to Zadok and to Abiathar the priests, saying, Speak unto the elders of Judah, saying, Why are ye the last to bring the king back to his house, seeing the speech of all Israel has come to the king, even to his house? Ye are my brethren, ye are my bones and my flesh, wherefore then are ye the last to bring back the king? And say ye to Amasa, Art thou not of my bone and of my flesh? God do so to me, and more also if thou be not captain of the host before me continually in the room of Joab. And he bowed the heart of all the men of Judah, even as the heart of one man, so that they sent this word unto the king, Return thou and all thy servants. So the king returned, and came to Jordan, and Judah came to Gilgal, to go to meet the king, to conduct the king over Jordan. And Shimei the son of Gera, a Benjamite, which was of Bahurim, hasted and came down with the men of Judah to meet King David. And there were a thousand men of Benjamin with him, and Ziba, the servant of the house of Saul, and his fifteen sons and his twenty servants with him. And they went over Jordan before the king. And they went over a ferry boat to carry over the king's household and to do what he thought good. And Shimei, the son of Gera, fell down before the king as he was come over Jordan, and said unto the king, Let not my lord impute which thy servant did perversely the day that my lord the king went out of Jerusalem, that the king should take it to his heart. For thy servant doth know that I have sinned. Therefore, behold, I am come the first this day of all the house of Joseph to go down to meet my lord the king. But Abishai the son of Zeruiah answered and said, Shall not Shimei be put to death for this, because he cursed the Lord's anointed? And David said, what have I to do with you, ye sons of Zeruiah, that ye should this day be adversaries unto me? Shall there any man be put to death this day in Israel? But do not I know that I am this day king of Israel? Therefore the king said unto Shemei, Thou shalt not die. And the king swore unto him. And Mephibosheth, the son of Saul, came down to meet the king, and had neither dressed his feet, nor trimmed his beard, nor washed his clothes, from the day the king departed until the day he came again in peace. And it came to pass, when he was come to Jerusalem to meet the king, that the king said unto him, Wherefore wentest not thou with me, Mephibosheth? And he answered, My lord, O king, my servant deceived me, for thy servant said, I will saddle me an ass, that I may ride thereon, and go to the king, because thy servant is lame. And he hath slandered thy servant unto my lord the king. But my lord the king is as an angel of God. Do therefore what is good in thine eyes. For all of my father's house were but dead men before my lord the king. Yet didst thou set thy servant among them that did eat at thine own table? What 
not right, therefore have I yet to cry any more unto the king. And the king said unto him, Why speakest thou any more of thy matters? I have said, Thou and Ziba divide the land. And Mephibosheth said unto the king, Yea, let him take all, for as much as my lord the king is come again in peace unto his own house. And Barzillai, the Gileadite, came down from Rogelum, and went over Jordan with the king to conduct him over Jordan. Now Barzillai was a very aged man, even fourscore years old. And he had provided the king of sustenance while he lay at Mahanaim, for he was a very great man. And the king said unto Barzillai, Come thou over with me, and I will feed thee with me in Jerusalem. And Barzillai said unto the king, How long have I to live, that I should go up with the king unto Jerusalem? I am this day fourscore years old, and can I discern between good and evil? Can thy servant taste what I eat or what I drink? Can I hear any more the voice of singing men and singing women? Wherefore then should thy servant be yet a burden unto my lord the king? Thy servant will go a little way over Jordan with the king, and why should the king recompense it me with such a reward? Let thy servant, I pray thee, turn back again, that I may die in mine own city, and be buried by the grave of my father and of my mother. But behold thy servant, Chimham, let him go over with my lord the king, and do to him what shall seem good unto thee. And the king answered, Chimham shall go over with me, and I will do to him that which shall seem good unto thee. And whatsoever thou shalt require of me, that will I do for thee. And all the people went over Jordan. And when the king was come over, the king kissed Barzillai, and blessed him, and he returned unto his own place. Then the king went on to Gilgal, and Chimham went on with him. And all the people of Judah conducted the king, and also half the people of Israel. And behold, all the men of Israel came to the king, and said unto the king, Why have our brethren, the men of Judah, stolen thee away? and have brought the king and his household and all David's men with him over Jordan. And all the men of Judah answered the men of Israel, Because the king is near of kin to us, wherefore then be ye angry for this matter? Have we eaten at all of the king's cost, or hath he given us any gift? And the men of Israel answered the men of Judah, and said, We have ten parts in the king, and we have also more right in David than ye. Why then did ye despise us, that our advice should not be first had in bringing back our king? And the words of the men of Judah were fiercer than the words of the men of Israel. Amen. Chapter 20, last chapter. Second Samuel 20. And there happened to be there a man of Belial, whose name was Sheba, the son of Bichri, a Benjamite. And he blew a trumpet and said, We have no part in David, neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse. Every man to his tents, O Israel. So every man of Israel went up from after David, and followed Sheba, the son of Bichri. But the men of Judah clave unto their king, from Jordan even to Jerusalem. And David came to his house at Jerusalem. And the king took the ten women, his concubines, whom he had left to keep the house, and put them in ward and fed them, but went not in unto them. So they were shut up unto the day of their death, living in widowhood. Then said the king to Amasa, Assemble me the men of Judah within three days, and be thou here present. So Amasa went to assemble the men of Judah, but he tarried longer than the set time which he had appointed him. And David said to Abishai, Now shall Sheba the son of Bichri do us more harm than did Absalom. Take thou thy lord's servants, and pursue after him, lest he get him fenced cities and escape us. And there went out after him Joab's men, and the Cherethites, and the Pelethites, and all the mighty men. And they went out of Jerusalem to pursue after Sheba the son of Bichri. When they were at the great stone which is in Gibeon, Amasa went before them. And Joab's garment that he had put on was girded unto him, and upon it a girdle with a sword fastened upon his loins and the sheath thereof. And as he went forth, it fell out. And Joab said to Amasa, Art thou in health, my brother? And Joab
Joab took Amasa by the beard with the right hand to kiss him. But Amasa took no heed to the sword that was in Joab's yeah. hand. So he smote him therewith in the fifth rib, and shed out his bowels to the ground, and struck him not again, and he died. So Joab and Abishai his brother pursued after Sheba, the son of Bichri. And one of Joab's men stood by him and said, He that favoreth Joab, and he that is for David, let him go after Joab. And Amasa wallowed in blood in the midst of the highway. And when the man saw that all the people stood still, he removed Amasa out of the highway into the field and cast a cloth upon him when he saw that every one that came by him stood still. When he was removed out of the highway, all the people went on after Joab to pursue after Sheba, the son of Bichri. And he went through all the tribes of Israel unto Abel and to beth Machah, and all the Berites. And they were gathered together and went also after him. And they came and besieged him in Abel of beth Machah, And they cast up a bank against the city. And it stood in the trench. And all the people that were with Joab battered the wall to throw it down. Then cried a wise woman out of the city. Here, here, say I pray you unto Joab, come near hither, that I may speak with thee. And when he was come near unto her, the woman said, Art thou Joab? And he answered, I am he. Then she said unto him, Hear the words of thine handmaid. And he answered, I do hear. Then she spake, saying, They were wont to speak in old time, saying, They shall surely ask counsel at Abel. And so they ended the matter. I am one of them that are peaceable and faithful in Israel. Thou seekest to destroy a city and a mother in Israel. Why wilt thou swallow up the inheritance of the Lord? And Joab answered and said, Far be it, far be it from me that I should swallow up or destroy. The matter is not so. But a man of Mount Ephraim, Sheba, the son of Bichri by name, hath lifted up his hand against the king, even against David. Deliver him only, and I will depart from the city. And the woman said unto Joab, Behold, his head shall be thrown to thee over the wall. Then the woman went unto all the people in her wisdom, and they cut off the head of Sheba, the son of Bichri, and cast it out to Joab. And he blew a trumpet, and they retired from the city, every man to his tent. And Joab returned to Jerusalem unto the king. Now Joab was over all the host of Israel, and Benahiah, the son of Jehoiada, was over the Cherethites and over the Pelethites. And Adoram was over the tribute. And Jehoshaphat, the son of Ahilud, was recorder. And Sheba was scribe, and Zadok and Abiathar were priests. And Ira, also the Jarite, was a chief ruler about David. Mm. Amen. Oops. Amen, amen. In chapter 17, uh, we see uh, Hashra's warning uh, saves David. And we see this in Psalms, uh, Psalm 55. Psalms 55. Yep, Psalms 55. Uh, 1 through 23 um, which is very very interesting um, the, the connection to this story in chapter 17 and you can read uh, Psalm 55 on your own time uh, in chapter 18 we see Aslam killed David mourns for Aslam in chapter 19 David was, was David restored as king. And in chapter 20, Sheba's rebellion. And uh, the conclusion is that uh, David's generational curse continues. So, in, uh, in 1 Kings, we're going to see uh, the downfall of Solomon. So, I hope you guys are having a great day. I'm about to go ahead and head to the uh, creek. Go go ahead and fishing. You know, God is good, amen. And so I'm gonna be filming that too. Uh my fishing my fishing sessions for today. And uh yeah, so 
May God bless you. May God keep you. I'll see you guys again later and tomorrow. Bye.